Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. I have five white wines in front of me. Uh, I probably shouldn't be putting them all in the same video, but uh, I've got three Spaniards and then I've got a Portuguese and a French one, and uh, the theory being that Portugal's one side of Spain and France is the other side, and <sighs> have I got it right? Have I got it wrong? Only one way to find out. Let's dig in. Uh, to begin with, we're in Portugal, Marcus de Borba from the Alentejo. Uh, I'd normally have plonked this um, a bit further down the order, but I looked at the alcohol in here, 12.5%, made from Arinto, Antalvaz, Verdello and Viognier. Let's give it a whirl. Soft, peachy, nutty, but there's a freshness behind it. There's like a lemon and nectarine zip. So it smells like it's going to have um, quite a bit of flavour, and um, but still quite a bit of grippy acidity to keep it fresh. Uh, concern maybe, has it got enough depth of flavour? So is it like one of those that sort of goes, shrieks, I get me now, uh, but then there's nothing behind it to uh, uh, justify you getting it in the first place. I'll shut up and taste. I think that's pretty good. Um, Arinto's a nice zippy grape. It always adds backbone and uh, precision to Portuguese blends. Uh, and then the other gra the grapes are Verdello and um, Antalvaz and uh, Viognier, adding a bit of plumpness. And it feels like they're all they've all got fully ripe. So there is some of that peachiness and that apricot kernel coming through from the Viognier. Pretty good wine. I like that. Okay, we're in Spain for the next two. Um, and uh, first one is Castillo de la Luna. Uh, 2011 Verdejo from uh, Rueda. Give it a whirl. Now I think of um, Verdejo as being like a bit Sauvignon light but with a bit more uh, herby finesse and uh, uh, maybe not as profligate and uh, this smells, it smells, it's got some of those citrus sappy edges of, uh, of Sauvignon but um, doesn't, uh, I, I, there, there are some Ruedas have got, a, I feel like they've got a little bit more concentration than this. Feels like it's going to be nice, fresh but simple. And quite a bit of weight there, um, uh, like peachy weight sitting with this um, sappy freshness. Um, and um, maybe the finish is just a little bit flat, I'd prefer a little bit more concentration on there. But um, perfectly pleasant, give me a plate of a quite heavy flavoured seafood and uh, I'd polish off rather a lot of that. Let's head further uh, to the, um, uh, I think it's a bit further north, yeah, uh, and but certainly to the west for, uh, into Rishbash, just for Finca Arente. Uh, Albarino, 2011 vintage. Well, this smells quite exotic. It's, it's strange, it's got a, a, a citrus edge, but it's not the lemon and lime citrus edge. Here is grapefruit, uh, but then there's a, a, a fleshier uh, fruit in there. Maybe, like, you know, like you get that fuzzy skin on apricot. Like you, almost like you can smell the fuzzy apricot skin here. And you get this musky perfume behind it. it smells good. Oh, that's really good. Um, it's got a ripeness, but it's got this uh, zestiness and it's got this sappy flesh. Um, and uh, one of those that you have, have you actually smacking your lips, have you going, um, a bit like a chipmunk, really, chipmunk. Um, but um, the, the, I mean, the wine is is excellent, a favourite so far by a long way. Uh, it's got the depth of flavour and it's got the breadth of flavour and it's got length of flavour. It's it is a rectangular cuboid of a wine, uh, and I would uh, very happily drink even more of that than I would of the one before. Um, uh, and uh, what I found with Albarino, I mean, this is uh, it, we, we are a year on from vintage uh, it still feels like it's got some legs and so if you want to keep if you want to buy a few bottles of this uh, it'll still be looking good next summer but um, looks excellent now and this is musky nutty character mum love it uh, so our sole example from France now uh, this is a uh, Grenache Vermentino from the Pays de Côte de Tau. Um, and um, it doesn't really have anything, it uh, doesn't have like the name of a producer or anything. On the back it just says Mise en Bouteille par EMB 84037T. Um, I'll, by the time I get around to posting the video, you'll be able to see uh, hopefully a little bit more about it. But for the moment, the label is not giving all that much away. Now Grenache and Vermentino. Grenache is a big slightly bloated one. Vermentino is the one that uh, is the Spanx uh, that keeps it uh, keeps it um, keeps it fresh and keeps it from going all wobbly. Um, and they both get a little chance for their uh, to have their their uh, to make their presence felt here. Felt here. Vermentino, uh, citrus and often with a little touch of pine. I'm getting that, and the, but I'm also getting this plumper peachier Grenache, and um, it smells like it's going to be fair enough. Yeah, rounded, pleasant, peachy. Um, there's a, a, yes, there's this fleshy roundness, not too big. Um, it feels like there's just a few little gaps in there that uh, 
maybe a little bit more vermentino I, I, I would have liked in there um, and it's not as it's, it's okay it's um, I mean I'm, I'm enjoying all of these uh, the, the least strong so far I would say but uh, would very happily polish off a second glass of that Final one, we are back in Spain, La Molta Catalana Old Vine Garnacha Blanca, so Garnacha Blanca again, uh, from the Terra Alta region, uh, which is, I mean, it's just, it's, it's that area around Penedes, um, Priorat and uh, Mont Saint are the uh, best known places there, but uh, watch out for Terra Alta, because there's some pretty good stuff coming from there. It's like floral aromas, honeysuckle, um, and uh, then I keep going on about peaches, but it's a, it's, it's a ripe, punchy peach character here. Uh, it's, it feels like it's going to be quite weighty, but uh, not so weighty. It's not, it's, it doesn't feel like it's gone over ripe or anything. Yeah, those honey, honeysuckle, nice blossom. Um, actually smells, it tastes better than it smells. Uh, this rounded juiciness about it. Um, and but with these floral overtones, so it's it's if it's um, I mean 14% alcohol, it doesn't come across as, as as being anywhere like that, and I think that's because it's one of those grapes that's not extremely showy and fruity, uh, just content to be uh, sit there and be uh, large and confident, and it is a large confident wine. Uh, one of my favourites, the Albarino for me is the star of these of these five, but um, very happily sit down on a nice summer's day with uh, any of them. Only trouble is, it's the 29th of November, nice sunny days. Actually, it's a nice sunny day here, but uh, it's minus two outside, so I won't be sitting on the terrace eating prawns with these today at least. See you soon.